This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Also brought to you by DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. <laughs> trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat, nostalgia we When pumpkins fly and hold your knife I'm a cameo Your little home turns green Your little face turns green This is bad. This little fence not green And film, every show Every clock has song and nose And all it takes is of Christianity. Uh-huh. Uh, psychic powers. Got it. A lovable scamp who's intellectually disabled. I'm gonna kill you in your sleep. What? I'm going to fill you in for free. Oh, great! Fill me in on what? I don't know. It sounded like what I actually said. Oh, wait a minute. I got someone on the airline. Hello? I'm sorry, critic, but what am I picking up again? I'm putting in an order of Stephen King cliches for the review today. But doesn't Stephen King provide his own cliches? Well, it's not 100% his movie this time. What? Then why are you- no, Hold on, let me put you on hold. Still there? Nope. Well, let me know when you are. Malcolm? Still confused. So the movie today is technically based on a Stephen King story, but it had so little to do with it, he sued to get his name taken off of it. Wow, this was the movie that Stephen King wanted his name off of. I know, right? He actually can be embarrassed by something. So it has nothing to do with Stephen King. Well, that's what's so weird. Despite having nothing to do with the Stephen King story, they still loaded it up with Stephen King cliches. No kidding. Yeah, so I'm purchasing my own for this review. Here, give me a second. Still there? Trying not to be. Okay, just a broken marriage, spunky kid, and abusive parents, and I think we're good. Oh, would you like an alcohol addiction for no extra charge? No, I work on YouTube. I see that enough. All right, well, your order's gonna be ready in five. The audience doesn't care. I left prison for this. Okay, Malcolm, go pick them up. Wait, what name is it gonna be under? Lawnmower Man. Is your radio on? Oh, sorry. It's Stephen King time! Kinda! <laughs> If you remember this movie when it came out in 1992, you might remember seeing Stephen King's name all over it. But the fact is, his short story about a lawnmower that drives on its own and kills someone I am God here. doesn't seem to connect much. The movie was originally based on a script called Cyber God, and threw in one character's name, one moment of the lawnmower driving itself and killing someone, and that's it. King came out saying, I ain't taking the rap on this, not my fault. And sued to have his name taken off the theatrical release. Only to sue again to have his name taken off the VHS release as well. Pretty sneaky, sis. With that said, it is strange they didn't make the film more like Stephen King's story as it has several Stephen King tropes riddled throughout the film. So this is definitely a first, a Stephen King story not based on a Stephen King story trying to be a Stephen King story when all it had to do was follow the Stephen King story. It's bizarre to say the least and definitely worth looking over. So with my cliches in the process of being delivered to me... Critic, can I pick up some Daria cliches while I'm there? I want to eat a ton of pizza and not gain any weight. Hey, it's your birthday, so no. It's not my birthday, so that's somehow even more insulting. Let's take a look at Lawnmower Man. The film opens with text about virtual reality. It's pros and cons? Mind control? Really? So that's why they've been pushing the new clockwork Oculus. At Virtual Space Industries, which judging by the design looks like a division of Mwahaha Incorporated, one of the monkeys being given virtual reality goes insane and starts killing people. <laughs> you sure this isn't from the same guy who directed Maximum Overdrive? This intro's phenomenal. It opens with Caesar breaking out of Nim, grabbing a gun, and shooting guards. It's so great, this is literally the first enemy you fight in the Super Nintendo game. God, I love the early 90s. It's still practically the 80s. 
I swear this whole scene exists just to give more credibility to the Killer Monkey episode of Frasier. And yeah, while we're at it, let's count the Stephen King tropes that are and aren't Stephen King tropes. Not my fault. As they take down Lancelot Link, the credits roll, and we cut to Dr. Angelo, played by Piers Brosnan. I'm trying to sleep, Larry. I had a bad nightmare. And I got the Remington feels. Yeah, it sucks to be them. Anyway, back to sex. Yeah, hello, Larry. Your chimp's dead. What? All great movies need to begin with, your chimp is dead. Dustin checks in would have been amazing if that was the first line. Angelo, of course, works at Virtual Space Industries, who is trying to make the monkey smarter through his virtual reality, but now finds it's being put on hold. Why don't you take a hiatus and we'll restructure around here? Don't worry, we'll finish installing the blue light bulbs. For virtual reality reasons. Joe! We're introduced to Joe, played by Trey Parker. I mean Jeff Fahey, who's intellectually disabled. Not my fault. And spends most of his time mowing people's lawns. He doesn't get along with his co-worker, though, a bully named Jake. Not my fault. That's dangerous! He's there. smoking, Terry! Shut the fuck up and fill up your gas tank. So sadly, Jeff Fahey's performance is not exactly the best in this. Well, at least for the first half. I'll give credit it doesn't come across as cynical or manipulative. I never got the impression he was doing an Oscar Bayesian performance like other actors. But not for a second did I ever believe this dude had a mental disability. Hi, Joe! Hi, Miss Parkett! <laughs> that looks like a gun. Looks like you're working hard. Yeah. I'm a real hard worker. Answer. Yeah! Hey, hey, you did it. Very good. Now, this can still work in something like The Stand. I never believed Bill Fagerbach had a disability either, but he was given time to show his sincerity as a character. We knew his likes, dislikes, and identified enough with him. This movie was trimmed down so much, all we got was the bare minimum. If it isn't absolutely essential to the story, it's cut out. Which means Job never feels like a fully developed character, so we have a hard time sympathizing with him. Thankfully, other weird shit fills that gap, though. Like Dean Norris as the director of Virtual Space. Angelos, like all brilliant types, erratic. But we tolerate them here at the shop as long as they perform. His whole performance is spoken with his lips half a centimeter open and his webcam half a foot away. He took out two of my men in a way I've never seen before. Why does Hank Schrader think he's Marlon Brando from Superman? Precisely why we feel it's time for you to begin guiding his efforts. Specific charges listed herein against the individual. We want to know what effect it will have on a human subject. A chance for life, nonetheless. Dr. Angelo continues to test his virtual reality in his sex wing, but his wife fears he's loving it more than her. Falling, floating, and flying. So what's next, fucking? Next? Pfft, that was phase one! Their interactions might be the most obvious of the film's trimmings as several different attitudes seem to collide in a matter of seconds. What are you so pissed off about? You said you were gonna take me to the city this weekend. I'm into reality, reality, not this, this artificial reality. They straight up edit her out when she exits the movie in this painfully obvious ADR line. Goodbye, Larry. What a story, Mark. And before you say anything, yeah, I see it too. I was born dumb. I ain't got a good, good, good brain. It's 3D, too. Where are the glasses? Glasses. I'll see you tonight when I go to bed in my head movies. I still live in a world where riding the bus with my sister is a thing, so I can't be that mad. Hall of Fame? Really? After Angelo pours himself an Irish breakfast, we see his neighbor Peter getting beaten by his dad. Not my fault. Hmm, DCFS should really know about this. Not that anybody around here would notify them. People in this town. Speaking of fatherly beatings, Job works for a man named Terry, whose brother is an abusive priest. Not my fault. Jesus, I'm starting to think this is more of a Stephen King story than the actual Stephen King story! Christ, is his hand always glued to alcohol? Not my fault. I have a game in my house that you might like to play. Would you like that? Angelo finally gets the idea to use his mind-altering virtual reality on Job. <laughs> no, no, if you want to advance his brain, you have to star him on the second season of Reboot. Whether he realizes it or not, these games are slowly making him more intelligent. 
I mean, I don't know. This game looks hard as hell. If you can get through even one minute of it, that's longer than me. I have different games. I even have one that could help make you smarter. Very made an Oculus joke, right? Because I have a real good one ready to go. Oh, okay. The experiments are working as he becomes more and more intelligent. And they also seem to come with a personal trainer. Jesus, this guy shredded! Does that lawnmower weigh the same as the wheel Conan pushed? Why are you standing there half naked exposing yourself? What sort of perverted behavior is this? It's the early 90s. He doesn't know why a priest asking that is funny yet. He finds himself standing up to the priest and seriously, did the makers of Quake design this office? I can't believe you went ahead and did this, Larry. It works with a human subject. It's incredible work, Larry. Super illegal, but incredible work. So of course, corporately, we're behind it. A young lady named Maureen, played by Jenny Wright, pulls into the gas station and express interest in getting the job done. Hey, don't look at me. She makes even more jokes like that. Well, I'm looking forward to having my lawn mowed soon. Perhaps your long, hard blade might collide with my frizzly, bushy hedge, and we can make sweet, steamy mulch together. Dirty ho! Okay, that's enough for now. The bully is angry, though, because he called dibs. Hey, maybe if you did your Megan Fox impression, you'd get some, too. <laughs> Back off, man. I defeated a priest! Angela thinks it's time to take Job to the lab to subject him to even more advanced technology. Synaptic reaction positive. I didn't even know this room existed. Change brainwave parameters. I guess this is as good a time as any to talk about the CG. Yes, it's clearly, clearly, clearly dated, but it is still creative. It wasn't exactly mind-blowing as it came out in between Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park, but they don't just let the fact that it's CG be the only draw. This imagery is really surreal and inventive. They clearly had a designer come in and lay this all out, as opposed to just tell some one generator person flying and that'll be enough. And when you compare it to how, not the best, but let's face it, a lot of virtual reality is today, I do buy that for a lab this size in 1992, this is probably what it would look like. Oh, wait, sorry, I almost interrupted the psychic trope. Not my fault. Psychic schmikic, who couldn't read what she was thinking in that moment? We partake in a love scene right out of an awkward romance novel. Which makes sense, he literally looks like an awkward romance novel. As his mental abilities get so strong, he can even move objects. I can read your mind. Come with me. I thought I just did. To the Riddler's Lair! I'll see you on the inside. They get dressed up as tsunami mascots and enter Quest World, but his thoughts go too dark and he turns into a Spy Kids 3D monster. Unless you were into that. Were you into that? <gasps> Sorry, the read the room part of my brain hasn't opened up yet. The sea was rough that day, and we were on a mission to find ye the door, Dash. I she was quite a beast, in that she wasn't a beast at all, nay, she was an app. A convenient app, says I. This past year has taught ye to savor every moment together. Spend less time prepping and cooking and more time with the people ye love with the help of DoorDash. Get ye what ye want to eat right now and right to ye door with DoorDash. I have a boat. Along with restaurants ye love, ye now can get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. Craving the late night ice cream, forget ye the one key ingredient for dinner. Or maybe. <laughs> God, okay. Or maybe ye just need to stock up for the week. With DoorDash, ye get everything in one app. Ye may think ye say ye too much, but I, ye be wrong. With over 300,000 partners, ye can support your neighborhood go tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and the Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy, and ye items will be left safely outside ye door when ye choose contactless delivery drop off. 
Ye may also think me accent is off, and I ye be right. But not Uncle Talk, I not be wrong about this special offer. For a limited time, ye listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on ye first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NOSTALGIA2021. That's 25% off and up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA2021. Hey, I'm the crab from Spongebob. Don't forget that's Nostalgia 2021 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Oh man, I got to do another one in this voice. DraftKings! The killer crossovers, the nothing but net jumpers. What am I doing? The tenacious throwdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, basketball is back. Hi, DraftKings, the leader in daily fantasy sports, is celebrating the return of hardwood. <laughs> by giving new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Playing daily fantasy hoops is easy. Just pick your lineup of pro basketball players, stay under the salary cap, and rack up points for three-pointers, rebounds, assists, and more. That rolling R sounded so great, I'm never doing it again. Score big, and you can score big cash. And with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes, it's the perfect time to show off your basketball IQ. DraftKings is safe. Hey, it sounded okay on that one. Secure and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever ye want. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code CRITIC. This week, new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Enter promo code CRITIC to get a free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. That's code CRITIC only at DraftKings. I'm gonna go apologize to every person on a boat I've ever met. Sorry, 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 sorry. Go to Jeff Kings. Sorry. is convinced Angelo's work is worth taking to Washington, but he believes there's still too many uncertain factors. I have to resolve some problems before presenting my work. This is premature. I'm not ready. You're ready enough. Now please unglue me from my seat. Just because I don't have hair doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Job shows off not only more of his intelligence, but also his telepathy. And these moments are clearly more in this actor's wheelhouse. We haven't been tapping into new areas of the brain. We've just been awakening the most ancient. While I don't think he sells the wide-eyed innocent, he is 100% convincing as the sudden genius with a god complex. Not just convincing, but intimidating. You realize, Dr. Angelo, that my intelligence has surpassed yours. I was terrified of him. Dude, I'm not even in your movie and I'm terrified of him! Job gives himself several more doses, becoming even more powerful while Angelo discusses the wrong direction this is all going. The concept of dirty money went out when the Catholic Church got into banking about 300 years ago. It's all dirty money. No one even mentioned the church. This writer might actually hate religion more than King. He at least wrote one pro-church book, and it was appropriately the size of the Bible. All right. Oh, shit! Angelo finds men are sent to abduct him and Job, so he gives him a facial and then punches him. Mr. Angelo, you forgot your messages. Oh no, being dressed as the most conspicuous man in the room didn't help either. <laughs> Meanwhile, Job has become more powerful than any human being and he takes out his revenge on those who wronged him. Not my fault. Devil's taking you. Your vengeance! The power of Tron compels you! Did I say some of these effects are dated? I apologized to a few minutes ago, some of these effects are awful. You look like how Food Fight would animate Pop Rocks in soda. What are you doing here? He continues to get his revenge on the gas attendant he works with. Go trigger treat this. Serve yourself, motherfucker. God, don't hurt me. Please. Don't say the imagery in this is boring. Oh my god. This is like if the scary godmother was farted out by the Langoliers. I'm delightfully horrified, but not for the reasons I think they're intending. Stop taking a side, Carla. You're treating him like a little girl. Afterwards, we see Peter's father is once again abusing him. I'm so sorry, Peter. Would you like an apple? It's bruised like you. Let's hit that minimum two things from the original to make it an adaptation quota. <laughs> ah! 
I know it's from the original, but even if it wasn't, this would still count as a Stephen King trope. Hell of a thing. The next day, the cops are kinda on the scene. I mean, they're physically there, but they act like they're investigating a house being teepeed rather than a horrific slaughter. Now, the lab boys tell me that somebody chased Parquette through the house with a power lawnmower. I would have thought that would have made some kind of a racket. <laughs> What do you think of this letter? We got your wife, here's her toes, pay us if you want her to keep her fingers? Pfft, kindergartners! Where's the rest of it? Bird bath. Did you say the bird bath? Bird bath. Job uses his mental powers to have them give up the case. But the way they were talking, it sounded like it was gonna go that direction anyway. Somebody torched poor old Father McKean. Weird human spontaneous combustion thing that, you know, that really happens sometimes. You hear about this base motel where a woman stabbed herself repeatedly in the shower? No wonder she crashed her car in the tar pits. These two seem more broken up than I thought they would be. I miss his fists of rage! <laughs> Job thinks virtual reality is the bridge to a new utopia and he'll be the one to lead the way. I'm going to help all of you cleanse this diseased planet. Virtual reality will grow. It will be everywhere. Beat Saber is life. <laughs> Beat Saber is life! He says he's going to upload himself to Virtual Lab's mainframe and become pure energy. I love that when Angelo says he has a Christ complex, he actually likes the sound of it. The first sign of psychosis is a Christ complex. Cyber Christ. We all love Cyber Christ. <laughs> He restrains Angelo and axes the henchmen who are coming to his house to take him. It's at this moment I realize Lawnmower Man might have been a good slasher franchise. Yes, again, the effects are corny, but there is a variety of creative ways to digitally kill people. At least in this idea. I'm being dipping dots to death! It'll still never be the ice cream of the future! And once I'm inside the mainframe, eventually inhabiting the entire planetary network. By the year 2001, there won't be a person on this planet who isn't hooked into it. Dude, just have hashtags, emojis, and the ability to complain, and people will do it willingly. <laughs> I once again have to apologize for a moment ago when I said these were bad effects. Uh-uh. These are bad effects! <laughs> when we realize maybe we were too hard on Birdemic. Jesus, they must have used an entire RAM on this scene! It crashed four times when they exported it as a GIF file! I have to go now, Terry. Well, okay, Job. Job manipulates Terry to drive him, but one of the guards shoots him down. Resulting in one of my favorite underreactions of the movie. <laughs> Rude. Bye. He gets his last revenge by killing people through Wonka vision, but Peter and his mother help Angelo escape, and they try to stop Job from transferring his body into the mainframe. Which causes him to deflate like a fucking cartoon. <laughs> Didn't Judge Doom use that to pass as human? <laughs> the CG gets pretty fun again when he becomes fully digital and tries to hack the system to get into the databases. You did this! You cut the network connections, but I'll find a way out! Again, it looks and moves cheap, but his design is very memorable, and the way they visually show him trying to break the code is pretty clever. What are you hiding? Angelo tries to stop him, but it looks like bombs are set to blow the place up, and Peter is trapped inside as well. Peter! Peter is here! Save him! Joe, come back with me. Hurry! Before I N64 myself into Vincent D'Onofrio! Look out! The model's gonna blow! You mean it'll explode? No, it'll just blow! We oddly spent all our money on this rusting, deflated Job tent! July 10th. I won't let Job's death be for nothing. It'll give me an excuse to drink even harder. It's 5 a.m. somewhere. I'm taking my work underground. If we can somehow embrace our wisdom, this technology will free the mind of man. Or I don't know. Maybe I'll just make a dumb Rick and Morty game or something. But all the phones of the world start ringing, which was Job's sign if he ever made it through. Hello? Oh, uh, do you need your lawn mode? And that was Lawnmower Man, Stephen King's best non-Stephen King story. Sadly, the film is not very good, but it is still very interesting. Not just for the creativity of the effects, which, like I said, are dated, but still fascinating to watch, but also for half the performances. 
No, not like half the people are good and half aren't. No, no. I mean, half of the movie a performance can be good and the other half, it can be pretty silly. I will say if you want another interesting watch, you may want to check out the director's cut. It gives the characters a lot more time to breathe and many of them are given much more satisfactory arts. It's still hard for me to say it's good and it is almost a whopping two and a half hours long, but I will admit it is better and gives a more decent idea of what the original intent was. As is, Lawnmower Man is definitely a mess, but it has elements of good ideas in it. And it is just so bizarre that a film so loosely connected to a Stephen King story has so many Stephen King calling cards. It's by no means a movie I love, but I can't bring myself to say I hate it either. When you get a chance, give it a watch and see if this virtual mess has any redeeming features or if it's just a lost cause in the digital realm. Speaking of which, where the hell is Malcolm? Hey Malcolm, where are those Stephen King cliches? Hey, I dropped it off outside your office. They said they condensed all the cliches into one easy symbol. Hey, that works. Thanks a lot. Happy Halloween. A time of deadly spirits. God, that's good. Weird human spontaneous combustion thing. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this one was a uh, recommendation, so thank you so much. Uh, it is the Autistic Self Advocacy Network. This network believes that the goal of, uh, of uh, autism advocacy should be a world in which autistic people enjoy equal access, rights, and opportunities. They work to empower autistic people across the world to take control of their lives and seek to organize the autistic community to ensure their voices are heard in the national conversation about them. With a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, this is definitely a good network to check out with good people. Uh, thank you so much for that recommendation. It's always, every once in a while I'll get a recommendation, I'll do research on it and be like, oh, like that one doesn't look good, but Again, four-star rating on Charity Navigator. This is clearly a really, really good organization. So definitely check them out. See if you can donate. If not, just spread the word. And uh, thank you so much.